My dear brothers and sisters, today we reflect on the sacrament of holy orders. I would like to base this reflection firstly on the background of the sacrament and the challenges of a priest. Jesus chose 12 men to be his apostles and one of them, Judas, who betrayed Jesus and then hanged himself after Jesus' ascension, the apostles had an important mission and that is of spreading the news about Jesus to the whole world. But they were lacking this one member. And at a gathering of Jesus' disciples, Peter told the group that a replacement for Judas was needed. The man to be chosen needed to have been a person who witnessed the life, death, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. So two men were proposed. That is Justice and Matthias. So Peter and the apostles prayed for the Lord to show them which one to choose. And Matthias was chosen and became the new apostle. We can read this in Acts chapter 1 verses 15 to 26. So the apostles chose a new church leader to be a witness to Jesus Christ and continue his saving work. Today, dear brothers and sisters, the Pope and bishops have been called and chosen to continue Jesus' work. They are the successors of the apostles. Brothers and sisters, all members of the church participate in the priesthood of all believers through the sacrament of baptism. However, some men are called to serve Jesus and the church today through the celebration of the sacrament of holy orders. And through their leadership in the community, in the church, they help continue Jesus' presence on earth in the same tradition of the apostles. Those who are called to be priests are ordained through the rite of ordination. And in celebrating this rite, men receive a permanent spiritual mark. It's called an indelible character. Signify that they represent Jesus' presence in the church. It is a mark that cannot be wiped away. There are three levels of participation in the sacrament of holy orders. As bishop, as priest, and as a deacon. So a bishop receives the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders. He is the head or, as, or commonly called as the ordinary of the local church. The local area that is entrusted to him is called the diocese. And a bishop is a member of the Episcopal College this is all the bishops who with the Pope guide the Catholic Church. Priests, on the other hand, serve the community in various ways. They may be called to serve in their dioceses or as religious order priests carrying out the mission of a particular religious community. They preside at liturgies, preach, administer the sacraments, counsel people, serve as pastors, and even teach the word of God. On the other hand, deacons help and serve bishops by serving the needs of the church. That is by proclaiming the gospel, teaching and preaching, baptizing, witnessing marriages, and assisting the priest in the celebration 
of the liturgy. Deacons are ordained for service in the church. And there are deacons who by studying and are studying to become priests. They'll be called transitional deacons. And there are deacons that include married men who are called to remain deacons for life and to serve the church in this capacity. They would be known as permanent deacons. Dear brothers and sisters, priests receive the sacrament of holy orders, as I said, in the rite of ordination. The bishop lays his hand silently on the head of the candidate and says a prayer asking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In one part of the rite, the candidate lies in front of the altar, prostrates himself before the altar, while the litany of saints is being sung or recited. You may have witnessed it if you have been a part of any ordination service. In another part of the rite, a priest's hands are anointed with chrism. In the rite for a bishop, the new bishop's head is anointed. So this is something, a little knowledge about the sacrament of holy orders. Brothers and sisters, St. John Marie Vianney said that without a priest, the passion and death of our Lord would be of no avail. It is the priest, dear brothers and sisters, who continues the work of redemption year on earth. What use would it be a house filled with gold where there would be no one to open its door. The priest holds the key to the treasures of heaven. This is what St. John Marie Vianney has to say. But the life of a priest, dear brothers and sisters, of course, has never been easy. It has required living as a celibate, foregoing the consolations of marriage and family life, receiving an income far below what one's level of education would demand and participating and practicing a demanding form of obedience. But I want to tell you that all of this can be handled. But what is far more challenging is that priests are always subject to judgment. Judgment sometimes by their very own parishioners and sometimes they just can't win. So what exactly do you know about your priest? Apart from seeing him dressed in liturgical vestments, a cassock, performing various liturgical rituals, what do you know about his attributes, about his limitations? Let me tell you, dear brothers and sisters, a priest is a human person with flesh and blood. He is not a log of wood. He definitely has feelings. He can become angry. He can, he can become happy. He can weep. He can bleed. He can become hungry. He can also become exhausted. He snores and he dreams. He can even sweat. He has taste and preferences. He has likes and dislikes. He can be impatient and anxious too. At the same time, the, peace, the priest can rejoice and be glad. He can have fun. He can joke. He can love and would like to be loved in return. Priests are not heaven's fallen angels, but the priest has been called from among people so as to lead people back to God. Scripture says, dear brothers and sisters, that God chooses the weak in order to shame the strong. We hear this in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 27. 
But society has placed the priest very high on the social ladder and consequently his humanity is often almost forgotten. A priest is expected to act like an angel and behave like a saint. Moreover, even today's saints are yesterday's sinners as we all are. They were human beings who struggled to be holy while sometimes making mistakes. Society expects the priest to be everything to every person. He should have all the answers to every question and the solutions to every problem. Every priest is called to be exemplary and to live according to the gospel values of which he is the custodian. Unfortunately, however, however much a priest tries his best, he is sometimes led into temptation by the very people to whom he ministers. They test his patience, they test his intelligence and tempt his faithfulness to the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity and obedience. It is quite absurd, dear brothers and sisters, when a priest does something good. Very few people notice it. But when he is involved in some kind of scandal, whether it is real or imagined, the whole world will talk about it. And I'm very sorry, dear, my, dear, my dear people, for the pain and the abuse that has been caused to you because of your priest. Please forgive us. Please forgive them. The lives of these dedicated men are full of challenges. Especially now in this time of coronavirus, in this time of pandemic, being a priest, reaching out to the people has been really, really, really challenging. Emotionally, physically too. And many demands are placed on them and much is expected of them. However, no matter how hard a priest tries to do his best, somebody is always there to find a fault. I would like to read to you a message which I received some time ago about a priest and something very interesting. It says, if a priest preaches for more than 10 minutes, he is long-winded. But if his homily is short, he did not prepare well. If he visits parishioners, he is nosy. If he doesn't, he is an uncaring snob. If he takes time in the confessional to counsel sinners, he takes too long. But if he doesn't, he doesn't care. If he celebrates Mass in a quiet voice, he is boring. But if, if he puts emphasis on his words, he is an actor who likes to show off. If he starts Mass on time, his watch is fast. But if he starts late, he is holding up the people. If the parish funds are kept secret, he is not transparent. But if he mentions about money, he is money-minded. If he is young, he is inexperienced. But if he is old, then it's time for him to retire. Either way, somebody will always find a fault. And when he dies, there might be no one to replace him. Dear brothers and sisters, the priests need you and me to be better ministers. They need to be valued. They need to be loved and welcomed, appreciated and encouraged. And the best gift that you can give your priest the best gift is to pray for them. Pray for your priest. Pray that the Lord may send more vocations, more vocations, so that the vineyard of the Lord will be filled 
with laborers pray for your children that they will be open to listen to god's voice that they will be open to the vocation to the priesthood so that they can serve god wholeheartedly and let us pray from the ch- for the church that the church will form good and holy priest after the heart of christ amen may god bless you and keep you always in his care thank you with laborers pray for your children that they will be open My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow